Welcome to my video on the quotient rule. In this video, we're going to discuss how to take the derivative of a function where we need to use the quotient rule. And if you need any extra help with calculus, algebra, statistics, whatever you need, I do offer live tutoring and homework solutions. So check out my website at mathmeeting.com if you are interested. But let's get started right away with this example. So here in this example, we need to find the derivative of the function 5x plus 2 all over 3x minus 4. And the first thing I want to talk about is why and when we need to use the quotient rule. And notice in our function, we have a quotient. Uh, we have two things being divided with each other. The 5x plus 2 is being divided with the 3x minus 4. Anytime you have two things being divided with each other, we need to use the quotient rule to take the derivative of the function. So what I like to do to make this as easy as possible is to label the top part of our function, which is 5x plus 2. I'm going to label this the high, and I'm going to label the bottom part of our function, which is 3x minus 4. I'm going to label this as the low. So now I can introduce you to the formula we use to take the derivative of a function using the quotient rule. And the formula is low d high minus high d low all over the square of what's below. It rhymes, so it's a little bit easier to memorize. And what this is saying is the low times the derivative of the high minus the high times the derivative of the low all over the square of the low. So let's use this formula to take the derivative of our function. And this is super simple. Every time we see the word high, we have to plug in our high of 5x plus 2. And every time we see the word low, we have to plug in our low of 3x minus 4. So now at this point, the only thing we have to do is simplify as much as possible. So I'll start by taking the derivative of 5x plus 2. Uh, the derivative of 5x is just 5, and the derivative of positive 2 is 0. So this just simplifies to 5. And now I can also take the derivative of 3x minus 4. Uh, the derivative of 3x is 3, and the derivative of negative 4 is 0. So this just simplifies to 3. So now at this point, we can use some algebra to simplify this even further. Uh, we can distribute the 5 with the 3x minus 4. 5 times 3x is equal to 15x, and 5 times negative 4 is equal to negative 20. And we can also distribute the 3 with the 5x plus 2. 3 times 5x is equal to 15x, and 3 times 2 is equal to 6. So now what I like to do is get rid of the parentheses. Uh, the first set of parentheses, 15x minus 20, does not have a negative sign in front of it. It doesn't have a constant in front of it. So after we get rid of the parentheses, it'll stay exactly the same. We'll have a positive 15x and we'll have a negative 20. But the second set of parentheses does have a negative sign in front of it, which means that the sign in front of each term will change. So the positive 15x will become a negative 15x, and the positive 6 will become a negative 6. All right, so now the only thing we have left to do is combine all of our like terms. The 15x and the negative 15x are like terms, but they'll just cancel each other out. And the negative 20 and negative 6 are also like terms. Negative 20 plus negative 6 will give us a negative 26. And our solution to our problem, f prime of x, is equal to negative 26 all over 3x minus 4 squared. So I hope this video gave you a better idea on how to use the quotient rule. My next video is a harder quotient rule example, so if you want to keep on learning, check that out. Once again, I also offer live tutoring and homework solutions as well, so the link is in the screen if you need any extra help. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one.